All right, let's do another example of uh, solving a linear set of equations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to guise this as a problem that should come up a lot, which is um, with what we'll eventually call generalized speeds. Um, so let's imagine we have a car. In this car, I've got a Newtonian reference name nx and y, and on the car, which labeled b, body b, rigid body b, I've labeled it bx and by, and so the mass center is bo, uh, and I have a q1 is the horizontal distance, q2 is the vertical distance, and then q3 is the angle it makes with the horizontal. So that defines the the three degrees of freedom for this car as it drives around, and it kind of makes sense from uh, an analyst's point of view is to make q1, q2, and q3 these nice easy measures. But of course, when it comes time to actually measure, if I were to do an experiment, it might be quite hard to measure the horizontal position, the vertical position, this angle. It might make more sense to have um, some velocities of the car in terms of how far it's going forward. Maybe it's it's tangential um, speed, it's normal speed, and maybe then it's yaw rate. Um, those might be, make the most sense in terms of measurements. So I'm going to have two definitions of velocities. One's based on the Newtonian reference frame, q1, q2, and q3. And the other one's based on the body's reference frame, which I'll do in the tangential normal and this uh, this yaw rate. And so let's see how this works out, how, we, how we're going to uh, combine these two things. All right, so I've got a batch file, a script file I've run already. And so I'm just solving a set of kinematical, uh, set of solving a set of linear equations that are actually going to be the kinematical equations. Um, so I've got a Newtonian frame n. That's my nx and y and z. Uh, I've got the rigid body B, which is the car, and I've got variables Q1, Q2, Q3, and I put the primes on there. So it's got Q1, Q1 dot, Q2, Q2 dot, Q3, Q3 dot. Uh, and then I'm going to say Vx, Vy, and uh, Wz. And this is going to be, Vx is going to be the velocity in the Bx direction. Vy is going to be the velocity in the By direction. And omega z, Wz will be this, uh, this yaw rate uh, about the, the vertical axis. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to rotate. I'll do a simple rotation. B rotates in Z. Um, B rotates about Z. Uh, relative to n about q3, which is this uh, this rotation, which is a clockwise about the positive of the axis. And uh, motion genesis spits out the coordinate transformation array, or the rotation matrix, from B to n, just like I expect. And because I've defined uh, q3 prime, it also gives me omega b and n. If I had defined q3 double prime, it would have also given me alpha b and n. But since uh, I didn't specify uh, q3 double prime, it only goes to the omega level. Uh, so we got omega b and n, q3 dot bz, which is no surprise. It's q3 dot about the vertical axis bz, which is the same as nz. All right, I'm going to set the velocity, as we know, velocity b up, because I define q1 and q2 as a position based off of the uh, the position of the um, mass center of the body. So it's going to be q1 dot nx and q2 dot uh, ny, uh, just by observation. And so it goes out and spits it back to me. And now I'm going to say, I have to resolve this. So this makes sense from uh, setting up the problem, makes it easy, q1, q2, q3. I'm going to go ahead and express velocity of O in N, velocity of B O in N, in the reference name B. And so it spits out this thing here, and it says that it's q uh, sine q3, q2 dot, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got a bunch of Bx's and a bunch of Bys, which makes sense because it's still in the plane. So it's going to be Bx's and Bys. It should be in sines and cosines. If q3 were 0, it should just line up perfectly. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying I have two expressions for the velocity of BO and N. One is in the NX and Y and Z coordinate system, and one is in the BX and BY coordinate system. Well, what's VX? Well, VX, if I look at this, is all this stuff. It's everything that multiplies. It's the measure number for BX. What's VY? It's the measure number for BY. So it's all this stuff. So it's quite easy to see what VX equals in terms of Q1 dot and Q2 dot and Q3. What's not so obvious is to see the inverse of that, which is what is Q1 dot in terms of Vx, Vy, and omega z. So it's easy to see one way. Vx equals all this stuff. Vy equals all this stuff. And it turns out that, that uh, omega z and Q3 dot are the same. That's easy. But the inverse is very hard to tell. What is Q1 dot in terms of Vx, Vy, and omega z? That's a little bit hard to figure out, which we have to solve a uh, system of linear equations. This comes up all the time for uh, kinematic equations. So here we go. Uh, so I got uh, the expression for V, B, O, and N, and omega B and N. Of course, Q3 dot and omega Z are going to be the same. All right. So I'm, I've created new vectors. Uh, motion genesis understands that this is the velocity of B, O, and N with the underscores. It makes sense. I made up another one, V, B, O, N. It doesn't know this. I could have made up anything I want, but this kind of makes sense to me, V, B, O, N. Uh, the velocity of B, O, and N, and I've, just, I've defined it as vx bx plus vy by which is basically the second definition what i'm going to do is i'm set these two things equal to each other and i'm going to have it solve the system equations for q1 dot and q2 dot all right so i do the same thing with omega b and n i said equals omega z bz and then i set up a system of linear equations 
So all I'm doing is taking these things and saying, take a VBON minus V velocity of BON in. I subtract the two, so the difference is zero, so I call the, this the equation zero. You can name it anything I want, but I call it zero because it's supposed to be zero. Uh, and I dot it with BX. So I take the X, BX component, it gives me an answer here. Take the BY component, and I, I do the same thing for BZ. And now I have a system of equations, a system of three equations, which are supposed to equal zero. So I solve the system of equations and tell it to solve for Q1 dot, Q2 dot, and Q3 dot. And guess what? It spits out, this is the expression for Q1 dot equals in terms of VX and VY, Q2 dot in terms of VX and VY, and Q3 dot in terms of omega Z. And so it solved a system of linear equations for me for these unknowns. Now, just to show that it doesn't matter, people might be wondering, hey, why did you use BX, BY, and BZ? Why not NX, NY, NZ? Well, it turns out it doesn't make a difference. I can go ahead and use NX, NY, NZ, and solve it again. It says, do you want to rewrite it? It gives me a little error, it's fine. And the answer is, you get the exact same answer. Q1 dot equals VX cosine Q3. If you compare this up here, uh, you get the exact same answer. Q2 dot equals VX sine Q3 cosine Q3. You get the exact same answer. So it didn't really matter whether it was NX, NY, NZ, or BX, BY, BZ. It shouldn't make a difference. Uh, I can solve the system equations. And so that's the most common thing in dynamics where you'd be solving systems of equations. And this is actually called solving for the kinematically equations. Okay, and there's an example where it's very common in dynamics is where we set up a, 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 a problem using Q1 and Q2 dots, but we'll want to use express it in a slightly different format. And these are VX and VY will be called the generalized speeds. We'll get to later in the semester why that's useful.